wife, Mary Ford. He was one of America's most popular entertainers. I believe we have some uh, videotape now of uh, one of his uh, uh, shows that he would do, 170 Man, daily TV shows. Fit, this is back all. in the 1950s. Why don't we get your mind off of it? Let's do How High the Moon. Okay, I actually remember that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Les Paul. Sounded terrific. Have a seat here, Les. Is this, now, this is, I'm guessing, uh, uh, again, it's a silly question. This is the Les Paul guitar, isn't it? Yes, it sure Obviously. is. Now, what, what does that mean? I, I know very little about guitar, so tell me how that one is different from another guitar. Well, the fact that it's a solid body uh, electric guitar mm -hmm. versus a hollow body acoustical instrument. Mm -hmm. And the idea was uh, many years ago, way back in the late 20s, it dawned on me that uh, acoustical guitar, nobody could hear it. How, how did that occur to you? Well, it occurred to me by working, working at a hamburger stand out halfway between Milwaukee and Waukesha. Mm -hmm. And my problem was the tips were low. And it's You're playing only... guitar at a hamburger place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I used my mother's radio and uh, a, a, a mouthpiece from, from, from a, a telephone. And so they could hear my voice. Mm -hmm. And they could hear the harmonica rack and me singing the hillbilly songs, but they couldn't hear the guitar. So you made your own microphone, your own amplification system for your voice. For my voice. Then I had to say, hey, I got to do something about the guitar. So uh -huh. I took a phonograph pickup and jabbed it in the top of the guitar. And I'll be darned if the t tips didn't increase. And it began to prove uh, uh, helpful to be amplified yeah. to the, the guitar. Now, how, how did the early version of that work? Did, I mean, how did it sound? Well, it didn't sound that good because it fed back and it was arguing, it was arguing within itself. Uh -huh. So what I did is I, I took a piece of railroad track and I strung a string across it and I put a pickup on it. And a pickup was nothing more than some wire 
of, again from a telephone, mm -hmm. and I put it under the string, and I says, "My goodness, this is the way to go." Yeah. And Ra railroad track. A I... railroad track. Yeah. Now like nobody's going iron... to and play a railroad track, right? Yeah. You can't see a guy coming out playing a railroad track. Yeah. So I says, "I'm going to have to lighten up on this thing a little bit." <laughs> so the next thing I did was uh, turn to a four by four. Uh -huh. And uh, then from a four by four, I lighten it up to what you see now. Yeah, but this is this is truly, this is an invention that changed the course of music. Well, I guess that along with the other inventions, which is the multi-track tape machine and the echo oh, and all. Oh, yeah, the I mean, but I mean, sure, but uh, but this was the the first one, and then you oh, went this off. This is yeah. a devil. This was a, this was a, yeah. a great asset. And in fact, I was playing in this very building in 8H in 1936 when we made a deci decision with Fred Waring. In fact, I did the very first TV broadcast ever out of NBC in 1939 and went all the way to Parsippany, New Jersey. Oh, my. <laughs> we, don't, we gotta go for a commercial. We'll be right back. Third? Yeah. Is that it? You got it. Uh, well worth the trouble to get out.